What's going on guys? It's the bearded one back with another beer review and this one uh, This one's a hat turner Like I, I'm, I'm serious about this beer review. I'm, I'm so excited For this can I'm about to slide out um, Heretic brewing um, This was a Christmas gift to myself. I purposely bought this beer uh, I would say 80% of the beer I've bought in the last month uh, I bought purely for review just just to get more content of some things that looked interesting and caught my eye but nothing I just had to have except for uh, this Heretic only has one distributor on the internet that they list and it's in Bessemer I believe Bessemer is almost two hours south of me and that breaks my heart because I've never had Heretic until tonight. I'm gonna have Heretic and I'm just so excited. But why am I acting so goofy about Heretic? Well, Heretic's master brewer and founder and owner uh, is Jamil Zanishev and he is the master brewer um, of Heretic. I just brain farted there. But he is like the Tom Brady of of home brewing uh not only has he won i think it was two he, he's won two nikasi awards which is like the super bowl of home brewing uh to put it in layman's terms at least two it may have been more but he also won a gold medal at, at a beach acp sanctioned competition in every single beer category and um, from what I understand that he said, or that I've heard him say, is after he won gold in every category, he went back to try and win best of show in every single category. And it just blows my mind that someone could even think that that's like a goal. Like somebody could set that as a goal. And that just shows me the kind of mind, the kind of passion uh the talent that Jamil Saint Chef has. Um and you know I and I listened to two of his podcasts. He's on um the Jamil show. Just kind of plain show. The Jamil show is where uh it's not in production anymore but you can still find every episode on the Brewing Network where he goes over uh every classic style. They talk about the history of that style and then he kind of talks about what it should taste like, what it should smell like, and that thing. And, and you know, according to like a BJCP judge and, and the standards of the BJCP program. And then he's also got Bruce Strong with John Palmer. Uh, if you don't know who John Palmer is, um, he's the author of the book, How to Brew, Everything You Need to Know to Brew Right the First Time, or every time, I mean. And uh, John Palmer's a really smart. I mean, he he's got the science and the engineering of home brewing down. I mean, it's like listening to a college professor of brewing almost. When uh, I listen to Brew Strong, I really have to pay attention when John Palmer speaks. But anyways, um, that's enough about Jamil. Uh, I, I'm I'm really excited to try this beer. Um, it's it, I don't know if it's a one-off or if it's something they do occasionally. Uh, they don't have any information on the website, but uh, but um, yeah, they took the base beer of this is their Tartuffe beer, T A R T U F F E Tartuffe Tartuffe. I say Tartuffe. Um, if it's pronounced a different way, that's you know put it in the comments below. Um, so yeah, Tartuffe is the base beer, and then here on the can they, uh, they say what they added. They added strawberry, guava, tangerine, and pineapple. So yeah, and it's a Berliner Weiss as well. Just reading the can. I'm just so excited to try this beer. Uh, it truly is a Christmas present to me. Um, and, and I... I'm just hoping if anybody, I just got done watching uh, the two Christmas episodes from season seven uh, of The Office. 
and I feel like I'm Michael fawning over Holly returning you know with this beer is my Holly and uh, I just hope it's not overhyped you know because like in that in that two-part series of The Office Michael just gets so hyped up about the ultimatum Holly gives her fiance and turns out that uh, she never went through with the ultimatum she never got engaged but they're still her and her boyfriend are still together and it crushed Michael so I don't want that to happen to me because <laughs> I just get so nervous when I overhype beers and I haven't overhyped a beer in a long time I feel like I've done pretty good so with it being in the can I don't necessarily want to pour aggressively that was a good pour I've still got some in the can I'll probably enjoy that later on so it looks like an American light lager well, the shade does anyways. There's a lot of particulate matter uh, floating around in here. It looks like a lot of dust-like material. Uh, that would definitely attribute to all the fruit. I probably, you know, I ran off. I'm sure they didn't uh, completely filter out everything. Um, a lot of carbonation going on here. Um, there's bubbles on the bottom, bubbles going to the top. Uh, head dissipation uh, pretty uh, pretty slow it's got some decent head retention it's definitely uh, dissipating at a somewhat rate but uh, I think it holds up pretty good let's see what was all in here I get the guava I think I get the guava, the tangerine, and the pineapple. I don't think I'm getting the strawberry. Yeah, I don't... Wait a minute. Yeah, I do get the strawberry. It, it kind of... I've said this uh, before. I don't know how else to explain it, but sometimes aromas are... I can depict them like I can make my brain like dissect and and pick out each individual flavor as like it was separate almost I feel like I'm really good at the doing that with like the barrel aged stouts um, but this it felt it was kind of that soupy like conformed like mesh of flavors which is fine it, it all comes together in a nice fruity aroma it's not a bad thing but I really had to pick out like the strawberry, the tangerine, the lime, and the pineapple. Excuse me, not the lime, uh, the guava. And then, um, I don't, I don't know what tartuffe is, so I could be way off base, but I feel like I'm getting uh, like a, a, a Pilsner like malt flavor I don't know it just it just I don't think it is it's definitely a Berliner Weiss Tartuffe might actually be a Berliner be the Berliner Weiss then added the fruit so Yeah, let's just, I'm thinking too hard about this beer. Um, decent, decent aroma, to say the least. Interesting. It's uh, not viscous at all, to say the least. That's the first thing that hits me. Uh, I was expecting a little more viscosity. Um... It's it's definitely watery, uh, to say the least. I'm thinking maybe they. I feel like I get like some kind of a pilsner malt or something in here.
So, so I get, I get the more acidic fruits like that, uh, the tangerine and the pineapple. Yeah, that tangerine and that pineapple tend to dominate, and then that guava and the strawberry is kind of a subtle undertone. I really have to think about what I'm tasting uh, to even taste that strawberry and guava. And then I feel like I get the faintest taste of the malt. Um, excuse me. It's got carbonation, that's for sure. Um, it, it's not terribly prickly, though. Uh, it, it's I use champagne like uh, carbonation a lot, but it, it feels like that. It's a light carbonation. It's got a drying finish. Uh, for how much uh, of, of the water is coming through in the beer, uh, the finish is definitely drying. It's not really wet. Um, and the flavor just kind of dies off as I'm swallowing it. It doesn't really linger. It just kind of dissipates. Um, I, get, I, get, I get some sort of malt, so maltiness in the sip, middle of the sip. And I don't want to act like I know which one it is. Um, it's probably not even Pilsner Malt, even though I've been saying that. Um, but they definitely use some kind of a pale malt, for sure. I mean, look at the color. Um, I, th I think... Um, I don't think sour fans would like this, I'll be honest. I think you can tell by how I've been acting in this review. I'm, I'm a little... <laughs> I'm a little heartbroken. Uh, I think I overhyped this beer in my head just because of the fact it said heretic on there. And um, I should know better than to uh, buy a beer just because of the name on, on, on the can. But being such a big fan of Jamil, who he is, I believe he's a good brewer. Um, I'm not going to write off the brewery uh just because i'm not particularly the biggest fan of this beer um i don't even know if i can recommend it to uh to rookies even it just it's just not the greatest beer in the world uh and i really hate to say that but i feel like i it's my duty to give an honest review and i don't care how much i like uh, a brewmaster or a brewery uh, i'm going to give an honest opinion every time and heretic is not above the law now part of it is i'm not a sour berliner weiss goes a fan so if you are a sour berliner weiss or goes a fan maybe try this beer anyways against my uh, recommendation and see if you like it because uh, I'm not the gospel here you know um, it's just my two cents about it uh, not being a beer for sour fans um, I think I think <laughs> I really feel like I'm disrespecting this beer and I don't want to do that but I feel like the Bud Miller Coors crowd might enjoy this and I just there's some kind of Pilsner American light lager thing going on in this beer. And I think with the fruitiness going on, that Bud Miller Coors crowd, uh, rookie or not rookie to beer, uh, might find this interesting. Uh, the pucker quality is not there for you, sour fans. Hardly any puckering at all. It's sour. I wouldn't say it's tart. Um, I could probably chug this whole can and not even like squint or have to power through. Um, I've been mulling over the grade. I don't know what to give it.
Yeah, it's just, it's really underwhelming. I'm going to have to just call it like I see it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of a 5. It's not bad, and it's not good. It's, I, I don't care, I don't care for it. Um, this, the viscosity ain't there. The water comes in and really um, tones down the beer big time. And uh, I'm just not a fan of it. Um, take it what you will. If you're a fan of Heretic, I apologize. But this is my channel and I'm going to give an honest review. Until next time, guys. Cheers.